Hey everybody, this video, what we're going to do is talk about how to use JASP and do histographs. So this is our series uh, using JASP for undergraduate stats, where we're walking through these how-to guides that we've created for implementation in a lower level um, stats course. And so this video is really going to cover just the basics of JASP and histograms. So what you'll want to do is open JASP, clearly. And if you are using the regular downloaded version, they have a new data library. If you're using the online rollout version, this is not the same at the moment, and hopefully those will converge soon. Um, but what you'll want to do is like pick a practice data set. If you're using your own uh, version, just pick a random data set, and you can still follow along. Okay. So we're going to go to JASP, click File. I can upload a file from my computer. I can upload one from data OSF or the Open Science Framework, and then I can click on Data Library. Okay, so this gives us a lot of options. Some of these are from the Andy Field book, um, or we can open Excel or CSVs or uh, SPSS files. What we're going to do is pick the Big Five Personality Traits one from the Regression folder. So let's come over here, click Regression. And then there's one called Big Five Personality Traits. Well, there's some really funny ones in here too about Adam Sandler movies. But let's stick with this um, Big Five Personality Traits. Double click on it and it will open up the data. So it's already got some analyses run here and then the data is here on the left. So let's keep walking through our guide here. So when you click on the J icon, that will open the data set in JASP. If you open a new data set, you'll get a new window. On the left hand side, you get the data. So each person is their own row and each column is a different variable. On the right hand side, you get um, the any results output that has happened already with this file. So in this example, they have this already run. So it's giving you a description of the data. If you upload your own file, that will not be there because you haven't run anything on it yet. You can change the size of the windows by hovering over this little circle here and squish one of them away or make this one a lot bigger. It's kind of up to you. Okay. And so you can drag it back and forth. Um, the nicest thing to me about JASP is that I don't have to rerun these analyses over and over again if I pose the program or I make a mistake. I can update the analysis that I previously ran by simply clicking on it. So we're going to scroll down and click on correlation matrix, which is a little bit um, in the middle here. So I'm going to click on the actual correlation table and you'll see that that pulled up an analysis here on the left. We'll cover how to run these analyses more, but by clicking on the actual analysis, I can update it. Um, let's say I didn't mean to run conscientiousness for some reason. I can move it out of the window and the analysis here on the right will completely update based on that new updated um, set of parameters over here. Stick it back in there, it adds it back in there, updates all the pictures and plots. So this is really nice when you're learning statistics and you make a mistake, your constructor can be like, no, make sure you move this over to the right and it will automatically update for you. It's also really nice if you're a researcher and you're trying to update an analysis, maybe you have a new variable or a new data set, you can actually keep the same analysis and like rerun it on a new data set. And so when you see analyses, what happens um, is you have the analysis settings on the left and the results on the right. And so if you like uncheck some of the boxes, you'll see that things will change. Okay. If you want this to go away, just hit OK. You can actually keep all three open at once, but I find it confusing personally. So even though we have all these pictures, let us run some histograms. So we're going to click on descriptives and descriptive statistics. Okay, so descriptives, descriptive statistics. And this is going to give us uh, some options to create some descriptives for our data. Okay. And so what that uh, descriptives windows does, like mean, standard deviation, min and max, but also histograms. I remember histograms are just a frequency distribution. So it shows you the number of um, participants or the number of rows within each um, area of the data. So we're going to select one variable and move it from the left to the right here in variables by clicking on it, either clicking and dragging, double clicking, or using the little arrow button. Okay. So you can double click it over, you can click on it and click 
the arrow button or you can drag it over. Just three different options. Oop, well, I didn't mean to do that, but <laughs> oh well. So uh, you can give permission to do different things on your computer. And you'll see that every time I've done one of these or moved one of them out, the analysis over here is updated. Um, to get a frequency table, click on the frequency tables button. That will only happen if you have a nominal variable, so things like words, or ordinal rank data. Now this brings us into what do you mean by that? Okay, so types of variables, the three options in Jasper scale that covers interval and um, interval and um, ratio data, and it also uh, like anything continuous really. Ordinal data is anything that is ranked, and nominal data is anything that's word, words. Okay, these actually match um, the options in SPSS. Okay. Depending on what type of option you pick here, that changes what your options are later. So when I tell it, let's go back over here, to show me frequency tables, it's not gonna show me anything because all three of these are little rulers. So if I wanted to fix that, what I could do is click on the ruler itself and change it to ordinal. Okay. That's gonna change some of the, the stuff above too. And so it should show me a frequency table extra version. So let me click on this to get it back. I forgot to put extra version in there. Right. And then now it's giving me a frequency table, which I don't really want because this is not actually a normal variable. So I can click OK, click on this again, go back to scale, and it will convert that back for me. Okay. So you can switch these around to see kind of what happens. To create a histogram, what you want to do is click plots and then click on distribution plots. Plots right here, distribution plot. That creates a histogram. Now at the moment, JASP does some funny things for histograms if the data is not truly continuous. So if the data is whole numbers and um, like, like no decimals, it will treat it sort of as if it is a, um, a set of labels and there's something a little quirky going on in the background. So we had an example that we were using this semester for our homework that had like 100, 200, 400, and 900. And you were supposed to be able to show how that's like skewed data because, um, right, there's a big break between 400 and 900. But when it plotted the data in JASPIC, sort of like ran them all together as if there were no break between 400 and 900. So hopefully they'll fix that in the background. Um, but if you have truly continuous data and or they fix the little problem, you will get these nice uh, distribution plots with a estimated curve on them to help you think about normality and skew and kurtosis. So that's how you make a histogram. Um, it will only make those plots if uh, those are variables are listed as rulers. So be sure that they <clears throat> are fixed to scale data. Now, how do I save this homework? Because I got to turn this in for my teacher. Okay. And this is specifically for Macs. Windows don't do this. So half of our videos are like, what happens if you have a Mac? <laughs> because they do do some funny things. So under descriptives, I can copy them. Okay. I'm going to try pasting this into a new Word document. So I did copy and then I did paste and that actually worked just fine. So there are some days when this will not give you trouble on a Mac. This may be solved and um, I'm on Mojave, but I just copied it and then I did command V for paste or control C, uh, or control V if you're on a Windows machine, um, but, or you can right click and click paste. However, if yours does not go swimmingly, here's what might happen. So after we copy it, so you can um, paste this in all kinds of programs that'll allow pictures like Word or OpenOffice. Um, for Mac people, sometimes you will get this little window here because it creates those pictures in a temporary location. And sometimes it like doesn't want to give you permission for this. Um, so after you hit paste, you might get this little window. And so you just hit select. Sometimes you see this other little window, hit grant access. And um, you might have to do that for every picture. Mine did not just do that for 
for reasons unknown, but um, that is just pulling the file from a temporary folder for you. So let's say you accidentally hit OK, okay and you want your analysis back. Don't forget, you can just click on the right analysis on the right hand side and you'll see all of the options that you picked again. If you want to save what you've done, you can save this as a .jasp file and that will open with JASP. It will keep the data and the analysis. So a .csv um, is a comma separated file, which is what JASP can open. It's kind of like a, um, a special type of Excel file. And so that's just data. JASP files include data and the analysis. So it's a two for one. Okay. And so to save that, you'd do file, save as, and then find a place to save it. So file, save as. Pick a place on your computer. I'm going to stick mine in downloads. Okay. And then hit save. And so that has saved this updated JASP analysis in um, a special place for me. And I can go back later and open that exact analysis. So this is really handy if you're one of our students and you're saving your homework and you want to show your instructor what you ran because you didn't get something right or you're just trying to figure it out, you can save the entire analysis file and send it to your instructor and they can open it and see what you did. So a lot of times when we're helping students troubleshoot as part of our statistics help desk, we just can't figure out what they did. Like what buttons did you click on? And they're like, I don't know, right? So this will help us because we can see what buttons that you clicked on and help you adjust where you misran something. So one of the good things about JASPS is it saves the button clicks for you in the background and can be easily updated when you figure out your mistake. So that right there is just some basic JASP functionality. Also how to do descriptives and histograms. Stay tuned for more on how to get into correlations, t-tests, and ANOVAs coming soon.